Okay, hello everyone. All right, so let's create an example program that's going to help us understand more of the if, elif, and else um, decision structure. All right, so let's create a program that's going to allow a student or a, a, the user to type in a score. And then based on the score, we are going to figure out what letter grade um, that score is. All right, so if you got anywhere from 80 to 89, you get a B. Anywhere from 60 to 69, you get um, a D. Okay, all right, so let's start. So I'm going to use an input function to prompt out the message to the user. Say, please enter your score. So the input function is going to pop up this kind of, you know, this text box, right? Um, or some kind of, you know, text box. With this prompt that says, please enter your score. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. Now, we are asking the user to type in a score, which is probably going to be a floating point value. It could be 66.5 or 89.7 and so because by default the input function returns a string and we need we, we, we like we, we can't use a string we can't use a string in calculation so we need to make sure we convert that string to a floating point value right because we the user can type in a, a floating point value like 78.7 and so I'm going to call the float function and wrap it around the input function we are converting whatever the user has typed to a float and by doing that, the float function is going to return that value, that value that has been converted to a float. It's going to return it back to us. It's going to send, back, send it back to us. When it's doing that, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it student score. And so student score is going to store whatever the user typed converted to a float. Okay, we're going to store that here. And then now we can use our if, elif, and else, if, elif, else, you know, the decision structure to check to see what letter grade uh, the student got based on the student score. So let's start. So if, let, let's first start with F, right? So if the student score, okay, is less than 60. Now anything less than 60, right? If it's less than 60, that means that it's 59 or below, right? And well, over here it says zero to 59, right? We are going to assume the user is going to type in a, a, a value or score from 0 to 100. Let's assume that for now. Okay. Later on, we, later on we're going to talk about um, how to restrict the user typing in value 0 to 100. But for now, let's assume the user is going to type in the value 0 to 100, just so we can get a better understanding of it. So if the user types in 0 to 100, then anything less than 60 will be 0 to 59. All right. And if that's the case, let's print out the message saying that uh, you got an F, right? Now, let's continue with our LF structure here. And so if, you, if the student score is not less than 60, that means that it's 60 or above. If it's not less than 60, it's 60 or above. And for all the numbers 60 or above, we don't want all the numbers 60 or above. We want to check for all the numbers 60 or above, but also less than 70. Because 60 or above and less than 70 gives us 60 to 69. And so the way we do that, we're going to say, L if the student score is less than 70. In that case, we print out the message saying, you got an, well, a D, right? 60 to 60 to 69, right? So we, the program starts and says, okay, if the student score is less than 60, you got an F. If it's not less than 60, that means it's 60 or above. And for all the numbers 60 or above, we want to check for the ones, okay, we want to check for the ones that are 60 or above, but also less than 70, which gives us 60 to 69, you got a D. Let's continue our LF structure. So LF, the student score, is less than, all right. So if your score is not less than 60, if your score is not less than 70, that means that your score is 70 or above. We don't want all the numbers 70 or above. We don't want to check for all the numbers 70 or above. For all the numbers 70 or above, we want to check for the ones that are less than 80 because 70 or above and, and less than 80 is, gives you the range 70 to 79. So for all the numbers 70 or above, we want to check for the ones less than 80. And if that's the case, we want to print out you got uh, a C, right? And then we continue. Oops. Let's see. 
elif. Okay, so elif the student score. All right, so if your score is not less than 60, if it's not less than 70, if it's not less than 80, then that means your score is 80 or above. We want to check for the numbers 80 or above, but at the same time less than 90, because 80 or above and, or, um, and less than 90 gives you the range 80 to 89. So we want to check for the scores less than 90. 80 or above, but, but less than 90. 80 to 89, you got a B. I'm just going to copy this, type my colon, print out this message, you got a B. All right, okay. So if your score is not less than 60, if it's not less than 70, not less than 80, not less than 90, that means you got 90 or above. Now we don't want to check for all the numbers 90 or above. If that's what we wanted to do, we could, we could have just typed in else. But we don't want to do that, right? Because if it's not less than 60, not less than 70, not less than 80, not less than 90, and you type in else, then that means that it, anything 90 or above will fall in this else you know, category. But if it's not less than 90, it's 90 or above. It could include 150, 200, 1,000. That's all 90 or above. But we don't want to go that far. We want, we want to check for the numbers 90 or above, but at the same time, less than or equal to 100 we have to say or equal to 100 if we say at the same if we say less than 100 then 100 wouldn't be included and it's going to be just 90 to 99 for all the numbers 90 or above we want to check for the ones that are less than or equal to 100 so a left student score is less than or equal to 100 okay if it's not less than 90 it's 90 or above for all the numbers 90 or above, we're checking for the ones less than or equal to 100. And if that's the case, right, so 90 to 100, that's the range. We want to print out the message that says you got an A. That's it. Now, like I said, you could have used an else, but then if you use an else here, right, if you use an else here, um, for all the numbers 90 or above, it would have covered all the numbers 90 or above, okay, which means 150, 200, we'll all say you got an A. We want to just check for 90, okay, to 100, all right? Now, you can still use an else, but the else, okay, if you have any code, any code in the else part here, this code will run only if the score is not less than 60, not less than 70, not less than 80, not less than 90, or not less than or equal to 100. So, because we don't have any mechanism for uh, checking to see if the user typed in 0 to 100. We can put an else there, right? So if the user types in, let's say, 150, the program will just say something like um, type in the correct value. You can. But you can also ignore the else part. You can. You can ignore that else part. You don't have to, just like I was saying um, in the previous video. Um, in the previous video, there was an example that talked about the else part. So if you don't understand the else part, look, look through that, and it will make more sense. But for now, we've written a program that checks to see if you know checks to see your, your letter grade based on your score, assuming the user types in a score from zero to one hundred. So let's run this, and then see what happens. So okay, we have an error. Let's see syntax error. Okay, I didn't. I don't have to put this colon here. The colon only goes after the condition. If student score is less than sixty, colon. Then we type your code. You know, no colon after the block of code that runs when the conditions are true. So I fixed that, I removed the colon, let's run this again. And then let's see if it works. Okay, so please enter your score, I'm going to enter 78. Now 78 is within 70 and 79. So I'm expecting to see, to, uh, to see you got to see. So when I hit enter, it says you got to see. Now realize that it runs one block. Okay, it finds, that one, it finds out one of the conditions are true, runs one block and exits out of the entire F LF structure and continues with code below it. Because there's no code below it, we don't see anything below it. All right, so let's test another example. Let's type in 99. So 99 is within 90 and 100, so I'm expecting to see you got an A. So hit enter, you got an A. So let me write something again here. I'm going to type in 49. Now 49 is within a range um, 0 to 59, so I'm expecting to see you got an F. So 49 you got an F. So that's a way to kind of check to see, you know, your letter grade using the if elif structure, right? And so this is this is just an example program just to help us understand it more. Okay. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. 
Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right, then. Bye-bye.